Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, and I'm talking with Marisa Viveros, who is the Vice President of Strategy and Solutions for IBM Global Telecommunications and Media. Marisa, welcome. I'd like to ask you a few questions, starting with this. What are the hot topics that IBM is seeing in the telecoms industry right now? Traditional revenue models are declining. Uh, we see a lot of demands from the users. Uh, networks uh, out of capacity and uh, primarily you know, unable to offer new and innovative services. Uh, all, of, all of that is leading to you know, continuous decline in revenue for uh, the telecom providers. Uh, furthermore, those that are growing are growing by acquisition. Uh, and I think the acquisitions primarily is around media uh, and, and video services. Now, when we look at the workload on those networks uh, with the pervasive use of video, it's going to grow even more. Uh, therefore, the current model no longer holds. Either uh, telecom companies have to continue status quo or reinvent themselves. And reinvention, it means different things. Basically, are you saying that they have to change to survive? Absolutely. And uh, what we see and what we're hearing from our clients is uh, that survival, it means innovation, it means changing, it means changing the technology, the processes, uh, the people, uh, and uh, really adopting new ways of working, uh, primarily taking a network which was primarily a hardware-based network, making that network now software-based, and adding machine learning, artificial intelligence in order to operate and optimize the use of the network. Therefore, enabling innovators and themselves to apply new services. You've said that you know, it's quite a warning to say that it's, it's, it's a matter of survival. Is there a stir in the industry as we speak? What about the newcomers who are coming into the game? So what we see across the world uh, new entrants, so that means new telcos that we did not see before, are smaller companies, very innovative, are disturbing the, the market. Uh, they grow by, that's, that's their motivation, that, that disturbance, and they grow by that. They motivate users with that, with those new propositions. Uh, therefore, the incumbents are every day more threatened by those new entrants. And uh, therefore, it is a model of survival. Really, is getting to how they can quickly, not incumbents, telecom providers, how they can quickly adapt, uh, how they can quickly change their people, adapt agile methodologies, uh, agile design thinking methodologies where people no longer have a product to produce, but an idea to bring to market, and they can continuously innovate throughout those ideas and bring new services that are more uh, tailored to the users that are demanding every day. Basically, in the end, it boils down to a couple of main things they have to do, is that correct? Indeed. They are there, you know, when I look at a, tel a telecommunication company, their product is the network, period. And uh, therefore, that network needs to be done in a different model. The second area that they need to worry about is business models. Uh, with these new entrants coming in, you know, to hold it, they need to really have a network and a support system that will enable the incumbents to change those new, ma new business models and to really survive in this new environment, which is going to be much, much, I think, a dramatic in changes to what we have seen so far. Do you think that CSPs, carriers, network operators are aware that they, that the networks are under stress and could indeed be approaching breaking point. Is this, is this known in the industry? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I talk to executives, CTOs uh, many times, and they are very aware that the network is breaking down. Uh, therefore, they have to reinvent themselves, make sure that they, they survive in the current market. Moreover, they strive in fusion markets, in fusion solutions. 
uh, they're very aware that they need to virtualize uh, the network, make it much more fast, agile, easy to re reconfigure, um, and furthermore, automate those functions in a way that you don't have to add more people every day, but you can actually use software technologies based on machine learning, artificial intelligence, that will allow for automation to happen. Moreover, as always, like in any transition, any, any transition that we go in the market, the, transi the uh, reinventing the people is makes it it's a substantial uh, aspect. And sometimes, as a company, as companies, you know, even ourselves, we struggle with that. How do we motivate people to adapt to the new environment, to adapt to the new tools, to adapt to the new thinking in order to make this a reality? Do you think the industry overall appreciates the level of the threat that they're facing? I believe uh, so. So, um, if I can just comment on a number of projects that we are doing with clients in the whole area of network virtualization. Uh, no longer just virtualizing the hardware, because that's primarily, I would say, 80% done. Uh, they have optimized 25% of their, of their cost in a way. Uh, what they need to do is leverage cloud infrastructure much more, and, and learn from the IT providers on how cloud it can be used in order to be agile and adaptable. For instance, if you want to do a refresh of the network, in a hardware-based environment, it will take nine months to do that. Between you bring the hardware, you test it, you retest, and so on, and you deploy, it will take nine months. With software environment, we can do refreshes every day, almost every, uh, no, twice a day if we want to. So that software environment will bring the flexibility to do that. So CTOs are realizing that they can, they can use those in order to do that. Furthermore, I think it is well known by our clients and by many CTOs that applying, like I said before, automation in their processes, you know, really leveraging what the market is developing um, as artificial intelligence, machine learning, what IBM calls cognitive computing, which we're applying now to the network, calling it cognitive network, so they know they can, pre they can predict, they can prevent uh, not failures. I think it does CTOs are realizing that and they're starting to have projects in those areas that will position them you know, really for the future. Marisa Vivero, thank you very much. Thank you.